And why does all of the members of the talk have to be there? How come one of them can't get up? So we can get every element of this group at the table. It's that simple to me. And if you really cared about the other elements of your group, which they clearly don't, you fight for your partners. You fight for them. No, that's disrespectful. That's our girl. Spinderella's part of the group. I tell you what, we'll do this. And you try to give the other people options. You don't just say, oh, they said you can't be at the table, so let's leave it like that. And they said, but this is a big uh, opportunity for us to showcase and, and, and promote our Vegas residency. There are other places where you could promote your, your residency. Mm -hmm. Breakfast Club would love to have had salt and pepper there. Yep. And with probably Ellen, hold on, hold on, with Spinderella, Ellen, don't even try it. Ellen probably would have loved to have all three of them on the couch. Yes, <laughs> and you do that. But they just like, hey, you step to the side, we're gonna do our thing and act like you're not supposed to be bothered by that. We disrespect you. And then if you get bothered by it, we're gonna say you're being confrontational or you're being disruptive or you're being hard to get along with. And that's how a lot of races, when people complain about racism or sexism, the person who committed the violation always says, well, you're, 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 you're being a disruption. Mm. You're causing trouble. No. You did some racist to me, you did some sexist to me, and when I make a point of it, you're gonna bring up that I'm being a problem, I'm being disruptive. That's how Salt came across. And whenever Salt did something, Pepper was like, oh yeah, well that's what it is. But if Salt said it, that's what it is. Yeah, and Pepper ain't much better. I, I think she treats um, Spin the worst, because even when they have a conversation, to me, I mean, I know you said Salt is cold, but Pepper and Spin, when they get into it, they, she, the way she talks to her, like she's not, like she's still that 16 year old girl. So, the kid, so she got her. So that's the difference. Salt is ice cold. Pepper acts like she's her mother, her big sister. Yeah, it's and a grown woman. This woman is 47 years old. Spinderella is 47. Every time you hear Pepper go on a rant, she's talking about some, well, we brought you in and we raised you or we helped you out when you, no. Spinderella helped them out. Yes, they put her on when she was in high school, but when she was in high school, she wasn't looking to be part of Salt and Pepper. She was a high school student mm -hmm. that probably had an affinity for DJing. Oh no, as a matter of fact, I don't even think she was DJing. I think she was in a hip hop or whatever, and somebody ended up teaching her how to really DJ. I remember she was in Kwame's video too, Kwame's first video. It's the man we all know and love. But they snatched her out of high school. Somebody said, don't, you wanna, you interested in being in such and such, such and such? I think it was her. Uh, Herbie Love Buzz, Herbie little brother, Love. somebody mm -hmm. came and got her. But they got rid of their first DJ. So they needed a DJ when they kicked off that second album. So when the second album came with Push It and all the other songs, Spinderella was in all those and she was on the cover. Yeah. And she really looked good. And she made them albums hot. Hotter than it would have been with just those two, Salt and Pepper. So to really disrespect her and say, we helped you or we raised you and we brought you along. They all helped each other. They helped each <laughs> other, but she's a grown woman now. Mm -hmm. The two rappers are in their 50s, Spinderella's in her 40s. There's about five or six years difference, but you can't keep playing people. Once you hit a certain age, y'all are all the same age. Once you get, once they got into their late 20s mm -hmm. and Spin was in her mid 20s or, or Salt and Pepper got in there, uh, early 30s and spending was in the late 20s, they're equal. Yeah. They're equal that's as far true. as uh, maturity and experience and everything. And it's like they can't get past that. You're still that, like you just mentioned, it's, you're still that 16 year old little girl and you stay in your place and you do what Salt tells you to do. And if you have a problem with that, you do what I tell you to do. Yeah, you stay in your lane. Yeah. <laughs> like she don't have no say. Totally Cutting disrespecting her, her. And one, one thing that's interesting watching the show, Spinderella had good or great ideas. They may not have all worked, but when it comes to great creations, great shows, you put all ideas up. Right. So say you and I come up with a talk show. I can throw out 10 ideas and you can say, all right, one through eight are good, but they're not gonna work. But there's nine and 10, uh, they have potential. But that's cool. We putting all the ideas out there. But when Spinderella puts ideas out there, they're like, eh, uh, 
So, Pepper, what did you want to do? It's like totally disregarding her and disrespecting her. Right. When she has great input that would make make the shows great or yeah. better. And some of the things she was saying, I'm like, that makes perfect sense. And then I hear yeah. you get shut down. I'm like, oh, that's how they do it. And you didn't even try to see if it was going to work or maybe part of an idea that she had that y'all had. You never know. See how it works. See what the combination will do to work out. To see how good that might that might have been a good show. Yeah. But they already. I don't even know. I, I I'm trying to understand the mentality of Salt and Pepper. All right. Pause right there. I must add one little tidbit to that, so you can get to the mentality of Salt and Pepper, and you're trying to understand that. I was thinking, how would it be if all three of them organized a show or produced? my bad or directed a show for the three of them so say they said we're doing a 30 uh 30 city tour each person get 10 cities you want to add something special you want to put a twist on this song you want to do something right here on this routine you do it for these 10 10 cities I'll do it for these 10 cities if I want, and then such and such can do it for those 10 cities. But everybody gets their input. Mm -hmm. And you can see what really crosses over and, and, and touches the audience. But for you to just disregard somebody altogether, that closes the the creativity and the, uh, the, the limits. It, it closes off pushing the limits to how entertained your public can be. But that's just me. I'm an open-minded person. But go ahead. So that's the, true. The mentality of of salt and pepper to spend around. Right. Because it's almost like it's all about us, but we'll put you in when we need you. That hurts. You I feel I feel the pain of her having to listen to that and go through that. And I'm thinking in your head, how do you how do you feel if this reverse happened? So spend did that when when they talked about the talk. I know you saw it, but. Spence said, well, how would it be if they said we just need Pepper Pepper to show up and, and I'd be the DJ and they said we really don't need salt. How would you feel about that? And Pepper I'm like, look, we ain't got time to talk all this. You being disruptive. Because Spence was like, I would be like, no, all three of us, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a package. They're like, eh, it's really not a package. It's us and then there's you when we want you. And they left it like that. They said, if you don't want to go, cool. So Spin was like, hey, if I can't sit at the table, if all I can do is DJ, but I can't sit at the table, then I'm, I'm, I can't mess with y'all. And they was like, ah, oh, so sick of her and her stuff. She's always complaining. She's been like this since she was 30. She's been like that for 30 years because y'all been leaving her out for, for 30 years. <laughs> right, right. So that was pissing me off. If you have a problem, for 30 years, if someone's telling you your car light is on for 30 years or somebody's crying out for help in your home for 30 years, you don't just say, oh, I'm sick of this person. I'm sick of this car, this car give me. You take the car to the mechanic or you figure out what's going wrong with the person in your household. What's going on? Why has this been going on for a, a whole year? Damn, this been going on for two years? They didn't bother fixing this for 30 years because they ain't give a damn. Because they don't care about her. They only want her when they need her. And then that, which is the messed up part about this whole group because when I first saw 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 and Pepper, I just knew that they was all like a sisterhood. Like this is a sisterhood that is it's all for one and one for all. But it's all for two and out for one. There you go. You know, so it's like wow. And she she has tried she has proven herself over and over again to them of who she is and the kind of person she is and they still treat her this way so that let's leads me back to what is the problem with salt and pepper is there some jealousy are you jealous of spinderella no jealousy what, Keep going. What, what 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 else could it be they are not what, jealous so what what is it that they feel like she get anything she does rubs them the wrong way this is what they did and there's two components of this the first one is they got business on her so when they received ownership of the house of salt and pepper they said well just you and i are gonna be on this deed and we're gonna be the owners and hey she stepped to the side she can put her in a basement she can help <laughs> yeah she can help clean up or she can be in the basement even though the basement is unfinished and she can access when she's allowed to come upstairs oh, but for the most part she stays down there but they got business on her 
and spin just like you, just like me, we're thinking it's a sisterhood. And why wouldn't all three of you split things uh, in thirds? Or like I said, y'all figure out a good percentage, but give her ownership. She's she's earned it, but they didn't see it that way. So they got business C on them. I, I'm gonna say business C, that's a word I'm putting out there. So when you get business C, there's a thing called, uh, what's the term? Intellectual property. Intellectual property means your idea is being implemented or something you came up with is being implemented. Salt and Pepper knew that if they take a lot of ideas from her, it would be her intellectual property and she would have a claim to some of the stuff they did. So they said, we don't want anything from you. You keep your ideas over there. We're going to ignore you. Oh yeah, you want to do it? Oh, oh, that's nice. No, you do that in your booth, but you're not affecting this show right here. So that's one thing that they were so doing. So it was only a business one-on-one -on -one with them. It with them no too. Sisterhood. But it's still no, a sisterhood with them too, like you yeah, said earlier. Too, but so not Salt and Pepper three. sisters and best friends, they really look out for each other. But Spin looks out for them, they just don't look out for Spin. So for example, in episode seven or eight, uh, Pepper was saying, yeah, well, this is what we gonna do. We gonna go to the Cayman Islands. Both groups, SWE, SWV, Salt and Pepper, we going to the Cayman Islands and we gonna just take a few days off, we just gonna relax. Now, prior to this, they were talking about SWV and Salt and Pepper doing the ladies night tour. So they're in, in the residency and all that. Well, Coco kept showing up late. Yeah. So Salt and Pepper said, you know what? And let's put the brakes on SWV and Salt and Pepper. We'll do some shows. You all get spot dates so you can join us in certain cities and we'll check y'all out on a trial basis. Y'all can come out and do What A Man with us and y'all can perform one song. And SWV said, so, okay, we're gonna sing uh, our most popular song is uh, Weekend in these. Oh no, you can't sing that. All three of them had a problem with that. You can't sing that, that's too slow. Our show is upbeat. So finally they got past that, but Coco kept missing meetings. But you know, she missed another mm -hmm. meeting after that. And Salt and Pepper were through with them. They're like, ah, we can't even trust them. We might not, have, we might not be able to deal with them. But when it came going to the Cayman Islands, Salt and Pepper didn't show up. Spin showed up. And SWV is like, where is Salt and Pepper? And Spin like, I don't know. And Salt and Pepper's manager calls Jimmy. He calls and tells them, ah, oh, they're not feeling well. So everyone's disappointed. And whenever SWV says something about Salt and Pepper, Spinderella's like, nah, 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 no, you get him a shot. You hear them out. I know it was, you know, messed up. They didn't show up. But no, you hear you hear them out. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they do have an excuse. Taking up for them. This was dirty right here. So when they get back, they talk to Salt and Pepper. Salt and Pepper's like, oh, it ain't, hey, look. We missed it, big deal. But when Coco missed all the meetings, Salt and Pepper's like, oh no, we threw with them. Yeah, because Coco had a legitimate reason why she was messing up. And she had a divorce. Yeah. But even though one was more on the business side and one was more on the personal side, Salt and Pepper were flippantly just, just they were like, ah, eh, so what? So what? Put on your big girl panties. We missed it. Y'all need to learn how to forgive. They just brush it off like it was nothing. So when they mess up, it's get okay. over it. Yeah, get, get over it. <laughs> when we mess up, uh, or when y'all mess up, hey, we got some talking to do. So they were not understanding with anything, but an interesting dynamic, and that is when they had that same meeting, while they were talking, salt, ice salt, ice cold. She looks at the SWV and says another thing, y'all need to be mindful of talking to, or talking about group members to another group member they talking about Spinderella over here. She's sitting two feet away. I need to be mindful about them talking behind people's back. Y'all shouldn't engage with all that because when a person does that, you do not diss and spin, throwing her under the bus. And as the V is like, wait a minute, wait a minute. But she didn't talk bad about y'all. She was talking good about y'all. She was telling us to hear y'all out. And so I was like, oh, well, well, let, well, let her tell us. It was just what? totally totally oh, disrespectful 
And Spinderella got a little upset and she walked out. She should have been more upset, but she got up and walked out. But she was like, I was taking up for y'all. And it was like, eh. So Salt had to put her foot in her mouth, but she refused to do it then. Mm-mm. She didn't want to. She's like, oh. She just said, oh. Yeah, she, no, she, did, no, she just looked at him. She just looked at him. And they was like, no, 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 no. They, Nobody was talking about yeah, you. Yeah, and they, they, really, about. they really got on Salt about that. But it's amazing how that came out of nowhere. Yeah. After the... Hey, forget it. You know, we we apologize. You know, we didn't show up. You know, and they go. You know, had emergency and everything. But y'all need to be careful when y'all talk about group members behind. I was like, come on. Are you serious? Yeah, they they. But she got checked because they was like, "What are you talking about?" Because ain't nobody talking about you behind. Yeah, you but yeah. Your group member was on your side. Right. Saying, Let's hear you out. Let's hear what they have to say before you start talking about people behind everybody. Right. Right. And uh, and and you were saying something the other day. You can break that down about how when you're a fan of somebody and then you watch them on yeah i was telling money green that sometimes i don't like to look at reality shows because it makes you change your feeling on how you feel about that artist like you know how you feel uh, you know you love their music you're into their music and you like them and once you see them on a reality show it changes your perspective of them almost to the point and even though you should separate it but after you see the actions and stuff, it really affects if you want to still, you know, go to their shows, listen to their next album. It affects all that because in your head, in your mind, you have a, a certain respect for them. You, you put them up. Not, I'm not going to say you praise them or idol them, but you, you have a, a, a large respect for them. Once you see them shows. And they, and they show their ass. Yes. You be and like. A, yeah. Nah, I don't know if I want to keep supporting this. I don't right. know if I want to keep supporting this group because now nah, I see. That's just like, you know, that show called Diva when they showed all the lady, the different um, singers singing and they was in a, uh, they was in a show. It was in, in the same long alliance of that. Kelly Price, I couldn't look at that show because I didn't want to change my views of how she was. And then, you know, it, it's, it was other singers on that show. So it made me stop looking at it because That'll make me think twice about if I want to buy their music or not. If right. I want to, you know, if I want to support them or, you know, rally behind them. So, so if this they, right here was in that same long, it in sure that same was. Line. It made me really not like, and I was trying my best to see things from their perspective. And I do see things from their perspective. I know where they're coming from. It's just, they're coming from a bad place. They, but they're coming from a business place and a cold place, like cold world spend you just came out in the short end of the stick because you weren't on your business and you weren't thinking business how they were and you thought you were part of something that you were only a part of aesthetically or you know physically when you look at things but when it came to that paperwork that black and white that company contract you really weren't a part of that and that's messed up because Salting them, they look they look cold blooded for yeah. real. Whatever they went through has put them into this place of how they treat Sven. I mean, don't do that much. I, mean, I, I think th- it's I, them being best friends. It, it, but that still shouldn't mess up your perspective of how you treat other people. Oh, well, it's yeah, because yeah. it's almost like you, y'all two are in a bubble and everybody else, uh, forget them, it's just about me and you. Yeah, and that's, and that's not how, how and that's not how it should be. So, go back to when Pepper said. We didn't need you in the group. We we were helping you out of doing you a favor, something to that effect, when they came and got her out of high school. The truth is, and she said, we had major success before you, and we had all these platinum albums. She said something to that effect. They only had one album before her. Mm-hmm. And I say Spin did them a favor. Not only did they need somebody to do their music, because back then you didn't have all these people queuing everything. They had somebody who could be a part of them and knew everything and and the show when they did their soft run of the residency in vegas you see how things are when you have a dj from that city try to help out and they had union members who didn't really understand what was going on and you can have better djs because they had somebody standing when spinderella was no longer working with them for like three or four years but Spin knew everything, or she knows everything about Salt and Pepper. She knows what needs to be played, when it needs to be played, and if they leave the stage, Spin can still rock everything, and it's still Salt and Pepper. Mm-hmm. They got this dude to stand in. I can't remember his name, but Spinderella helped this guy along a little bit, and she was a mentor to him a little bit. And then when she left the group, 
because of the same stuff he took over. So Spinderella was upset about that. But anyway, so let's get back to what I was getting at about them saying they didn't need her. They needed her to help them with all their music because no one else could do it and commit to it. They needed one person to do it. The original Spinderella was out. Mm -hmm. So they brought her in to be Spinderella. So that's one. One thing. Oh, it's no disruption. So we got somebody else to do the music. Yes, we lost the uh, Spinderella, but now we got another one. So now your audience still sees three women up there. So they really, she did, really did help Salt and Pepper out. Otherwise, people be saying, what happened to the, your DJ? What happened to the one on the cover? Because she's on the cover of the first album. So they played it off and slid her in there, slightly younger, a little PYT coming in there. And she helped the group in a major way. She knew the cues. She knew when they ended on whatever song, this is what she needed to do next. When they went off to change clothes or whatever they had to do, she knew what to do. She knew how to cue everything up. She knew all that. And now, I mean, with this new guy that they got in here that you said, what they gonna see now? Well, they gonna, salt they gonna. And, salt and a man? Yeah. Salt and, <laughs> salt and pepper and paprika. And pap or, or whatever he is back there. Oh, God. And uh, that's not the same. Salt, pepper but it's, and garlic. I right. Mean, what? But it's Come not on. the same. It's so, not gonna be the same. And, uh, and they really put it out there like Peppa kept saying like they were babysitting. We I, we babysat her. We're not babysitting her anymore, whatever. She's 40 something years old. You weren't babysitting her in her 20s. Thank you, you. You may have been babysitting her when she was 16 to 21. You may have been. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For, for five years. But once she hit 18, 21, all that babysitting stuff was over. She knew the business. Right. So you ain't need a babysitter. So if you didn't anymore. need her, and you were helping her out, then why have a DJ join your group in the first place? Why did they in, in, uh, recruit her mm -hmm. if they didn't need her, if they didn't need a DJ? Correct. So that doesn't make sense right there. And that was the image too. That was the image of the three ladies. Yeah. Before they had, you know, before they kicked the other um, DJ out. That was the image, that was the look that, right? was, that they were going for. And um, Spin was still started. looking out for them. Yeah. Everything they did back in the episode, when it, it's like, I can talk about them to the manager or whatever, or to them themselves, but I'm not gonna talk bad about them as SWV, and y'all better not come to me with that, because they were still my girls. Yeah. But they was like, salt and pepper ain't see it that way. They didn't even realize that she was still looking out for them. Talking about some babysitting, spending around, you ain't babysitting this woman, and her I'm sick of babysitting her. Oh my goodness, they made me upset. You had to, Spinderella, Salt and Pepper had their own click against Spinderella. You mm -hmm. had that thing going on, leaving them out. And you can see when they had business meetings to go over logistics and everything, they wouldn't tell her. Uh -uh, they would just really leave her out of everything. So that lets you know right there how the business was being ran. Now, here's something for everybody to take in. I should have brought this up earlier. You don't have to do this, but this is a great way to do things. I'm gonna propose two different solutions that two other popular groups did. Number one, The Whispers. The Whispers originally had five members. Mm -hmm. One member was an alcoholic and he passed away. He passed away, you get what? Another four member. people, no, you're, four no, people. no, they had four people, four, people. four members, mm -hmm. and they could divide the check between four people. Pause right there, let's go to New Edition. When Bobby Brown left the group, you had four members. They were talking about Johnny Gill signing, and I think Ralph was the one saying, oh, hell no, because he's going to mess about checks. It was being divided five ways. Now Bobby left, now it's being divided four ways. I'm getting more money now. Why would y'all invite somebody else in the group and mess up the, the division of the money again? That's how they did it. The Whispers said, once that member passed, we still have five members and we're still dividing the money up five ways. And his family is gonna get this money. Whatever we do, he's cut in, period. No arguments, yeah. no fussing, no fighting. Who sings? The twins are the ones who mainly sing. The other three members were doing backup. One passed away, now you got two members doing backup they still were getting paid. And Everybody no matter getting... what happened to the member, even one of the other members went to jail right. for a brief stint, 
That's still him. Still was getting money. That's him. Before he passed yeah. away, they he still, still divided the still money that way, it. right? And uh, they had somebody else pass away recently. Nick, one with the big beard. Nick called him Nick at night. He passed away from the whispers. His family. I'm sure, and they haven't said this in an interview, but if that member died back in the early '80s, and they still divided five ways, and I'm sure they still dividing it five ways, right. and Nick is giving money. Plus, Nick wrote a lot of them songs too. And the Whispers really cared about each other. Yeah, they See did. the difference? Now, I just told you how the Whispers did it. Now, here's the other way it could be done for Salt and Pepper. Oh, no, we, already, no, we ain't talking about New Edition. Oh, you see, go back to you see New Edition is broken up right now. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> so the Whispers, you never heard them having any problems, any squabbles, any fights. Between each other. They divide that money mm -hmm. five ways. It's done. The other way to do it, full force. Full Force has six members. You mainly see the three brothers, but they have six members and three, the other three members are brothers too. Mm -hmm. Full Force said, not only are we dividing the money evenly, but if Bowleg and Lou writes a song, all six of us get, get writing credits for that song. All six of us. Never any problems at a full force. You never hear any problems with them fighting or squabbling between those three brothers or the three brothers that you never get to see who normally back there playing the instruments. Uh, Paul Anthony writes a hit song. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets paid to get credit for songwriting and they get paid for the performances and they get paid for the record sales. No problems. This, uh, who's the other group? Now, I'm gonna add a third group in here. Tony, Tony, Tony. I believe they originally had six members, but only two or three were getting paid. So what do you think the other three members did? They were the quote unquote Spinderella of Tony, Tony, Tony. They was like, wait a minute. How come we can't, you know, they originally had an album with all six members on the, on the front. Mm -hmm. Record company came and said, ah, let's put them inside the cover, the booklet. You three would be on the front. So that second album came out, it feels good and all that kind of stuff. Never rains in Southern California. Three guys, and then the other three guys are uh, mixed up in the, in the booklets and folders everywhere. And they were treated like the Spinderella when they said something, it was like, ah. And eventually they got replaced. And they said, we started this together, what's up? And Raphael Sadiq and Dwayne Wiggins, they're like, nah, we're brothers. Y'all over there, dissed them just like that brought in new members, washed all that out of there. That's how they doing spin. This stuff bothers me. I'm telling you. It makes me look at salt and pepper differently. How they how they did that girl, Spinderella. So Spinderella's sewing. She wants some money. For all the paint and she not not for the paint and suffering, but for the paint to her pockets, how they keeping money. They use her likeness in advertising, mm -hmm. but didn't pay her for it. So if she's not a member of everything, then why put her out there as part of the group? And, and the videos. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, yeah. And put her on songs that she rapped on. You yeah. Know, she she had a part in there too. And uh, and then another thing was when they went to the Cayman Islands, Spin would just say, "Ah, oh, that's just what I had to deal with." When they would talk about bad about Salt and Pepper, she wouldn't join them. And she said, oh, that's just how they are. That's you know, hey, those my, that's how they are." You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And Salt made that little statement about don't be talking behind our backs or that other member or that whatever. But when they got along with SWV, they were talking bad about Spinderella. They were saying, we're tired of babysitting her. It's been going on for too long. We're tired of it. We're sick of it. We've had it up to here. Blah, blah. I'm like, oh my goodness. Just a few days ago, you were saying that you don't want people talking about other people. But I and guess, I did it. but I guess she wasn't part of the group. If you really want to break it down. Yeah. I guess they were trying to really put it out there to saw it wasn't part of it. Yeah, but well, didn't one of the SUV members took, take up the spin? Ta Taj. 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 She, she immediately noticed something wasn't right. Mm -hmm. She's like, wait a minute, what's going on? She could see in the meetings when certain things were being said, she looked like, wait a minute. Why are they talking to her like that? And why are they, oh my, this is... And then later she would get spent by herself. She's like, what in the hell happened back there? What's going on? And spend like, ah, that's what I deal with. Now you see it for yourself. 
saying things like that. Right, and I mean, and, and SWV is as three people, but Coco is the one who carries the group because she's the lead singer. Right. But she doesn't, she, anytime they make a decision, all three of them still make a decision because that's the group. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you got three three ladies groups on here and you see how different they all um, treat each other. Right. So they, they, they now they're getting to see the real, the, the idol that they love. Now they get to see them in a real right. different light. And another thing, Salt said, Salt and Pepper were griping to their manager, Jimmy, because Jimmy did a lot of their dirty work. As a manager, he really wasn't a good manager. He may be good at getting them opportunities or helping them along or assisting him. He looked more like an assistant than a manager. A manager is supposed to manage the group, mm -hmm. make sure the group gets along, make sure everyone is happy. Mm -hmm. Make sure everyone has what they need physically and, you know, literally when it comes to their wants and needs. So at one point, Salt said, we got paid and we cut her in and we were not contractually obligated to cut her in. So she said, we gave her $1.6 million out of our own money. So Salt got three million, Peppa got three million, and Spin got 1.6. So I believe they were saying we both got three million and we took $800,000 out of our money and gave it to her. So Salt gave Spin 800,000. Peppa gave her 800,000, which made 1.6 million. They still had 2.2 million each. Mm -hmm. Which was good, but you hear they kept saying contractually, we weren't obligated to give that to her. We did that out of the niceness of our hearts and all this kind of, I'm like, y'all ain't got no niceness in your hearts. But after all the stuff she did, she is owed something. Yeah. She should be. And why shouldn't she make a million dollars if y'all each are making three? Right. And Is you she still, supposed to get, do this for free? <laughs> yes, it's, oh my goodness. This, this was an eye opener. So anybody out there who thinks that your friend is really your friend what they really think about you or how they really are as a human being is going to show up on that contract so spin should have known and now this is with spin spin was at fault spin should have had her own manager and someone should have told her wait a minute they just signed a deal without your name on the contract that means you're not a part of this group so y'all are quote unquote friends in your eyes, in their eyes, their friends and their group, and you're just along for the ride. Mm -hmm. So if I were you, try to be a part of them contracts. If you can be a part of them contracts, you pimp salt and pepper group, the name, the brand, as well as you can, and make money elsewhere and collect money on the road with them. But always remember that you aren't in the group you just appear to be in the group to the public so if shays and i get another call from big time producers and they present us with a contract for a talk show they can't come to me and say look here we like this lyrics and last things you do sometimes you get serious sometimes you act a fool you act an ass we like it we like it we're going to give you X amount of dollars. And uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, keep shades, keep shades. But we got this contract for you. So if you want to give her some money, you can. But here, here's the contract. I ain't going for that. So if, if that did happen, whatever that number was at the top, I'm going to always use 100,000 because it's a flat number, easy to divide and everything. Say that number is $100,000. If I sign that contract, because they say they don't want you to be a part of it, I will have to show you the contract afterwards. See that number right there? Yeah, how much is it? $100,000. What'd you say? $100,000, all right. Here's a check for 50 for you. And we leave it like that. How come they ain't want me to be on it? I don't know, but there's money on the table. I got half, you got half. We gonna leave it like that. But I ain't gonna say, oh, they gave me $100,000. I ain't gonna tell Shays, but Shays know I signed the contract and I don't tell her about how much. And I slide Shays. I, I slide Shay's fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, and now I'm around here living it up with my eighty-five thousand or eighty thousand dollars, 
and she got her little 15, 20, and I'm acting like everything is normal. And I was nice enough to give that to her because her name wasn't on the contract. So I wasn't contractually obligated to give that to Shays. But where's your integrity? Where's your humanity? I, I, hey, hey, I, mm. salt and pepper, yeah, yeah. And it makes you, like when I hear the lyrics now, it, I, it sounds a little different. The first album doesn't sound different, but the other albums sound different. I hear Spin in there and doing her thing and I hear them say her name, I'm like, eh. Y'all sound a little funny now because we know how y'all really are. This is an act. Yeah, yeah it's, an it's, act. it's a good act. It's a good act. And the act just came to a close just now. So they're going to retain some fans because some fans aren't going to care. But some fans are going to say, ah, I, I can't support y'all like that. But if y'all on the bill with a big show, yeah, I support. But otherwise, now Spin, I could, cause I could support with enthusiasm. Ben was trying to get a residency and they kept trying to put salt and pepper into her residence. She said, no, I just do an after party or two every month. It'd be Spinderella's, whatever, whatever. And it'd be me doing my own thing. And it was like, nah, well, you know, that manager was dragging his feet, but he was part of salt and pepper. Mm. So he managed salt and pepper. So he's still thinking I had to do what's best for the group. group. Yeah. So he said, yeah, well, how about this? We have salt come out sometime and pepper, or we have brandy or somebody come out, whatever, whatever. Not only cutting, cutting into her money, but more importantly, cutting into her idea and cutting into her individual act, act and her individual brand. Right, and because now she needs to be individualized because uh, she was never in the group. <laughs> Yeah, according to them. According to Salt and Pepper, she was never in a group. Now she's trying to do her own thing and be be out here in the front fourth. Now you're still trying to push Salt and Pepper on her. For what? They they act like she don't even really exist unless they want her to exist. And they're going to get money off of her when she... She ain't get no hardly get no, no money, money off them. of them. Right. So, uh, oh my goodness. I, I wish spend the best. I continue to support her. I would actually check her out. She ended up getting married. I know you saw it at the end of the episode, the final episode. She ended up getting proposed to by her uh, boyfriend or whatever. So big ups to Spinderella. And uh, salt and pepper, ice cold. <laughs> ice cold salt. Ice salt. <laughs> and, uh, ice salt. And that, and, and the, the, the careless pepper. Pepper don't care. Pepper like, pepper like whatever. Can I have fun and all that men? I ain't thinking about nothing else. <laughs> Spend it rather than kiss my ass. That's what it hey, sounds like. Y'all do what y'all do, Salt and Pepper. I, I wish, I wish I could say I ain't mad at you, but I'm just gonna leave it alone. Y'all, y'all did y'all thing, and y'all, y'all got y'all business together. How about that? Well, somebody put what a scam, what a scam, what a scam, what a mighty good scam. What a mighty good scam. <laughs> they have their business together, <laughs> but their brand is tarnished. So, yeah. Sandy B, Sandy and Cheryl. Excellent business model for the two of you, <laughs> but your brand has taken a major hit and you're not gonna be able to come back from it unless you make things right with that young lady. And I know y'all don't wanna do that, but it's y'all world, it's y'all business, it's y'all group. Y'all do what y'all wanna do and your fans have the right to react and do what they wanna do when it comes to support you. So like I said, some people are gonna support them some people don't care, and some people are gonna say, you know what, I ain't messing with salt and pepper like that, for real. So the saga continues. It's like lyrics and lies continue, and yeah, and it's and uh, how you gonna have a song talking about some life is all about expression, and as soon as Spinderella expresses herself, <laughs> they got a damn problem with her. Y'all need to practice what y'all preach, oh for real. It is so many hypocrisies within Salt and Pepper when it comes to Spinderella. But we gonna leave that alone. Lyrics and lies. So we will be back in a couple of days. I'm Money Green. I'm Shays on the mic and we out.